Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. And I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And uh, today we're going to be discussing clavicle fractures or collarbone fractures. Is this a straightforward topic? Uh, so parts of it I would say are, but mm -hmm. certainly the treatment I would say is controversial. Again, another controversial <laughs> treatment option. Okay, so let's start like we always do with uh, what is the clavicle? So the clavicle, Paul's little bone, lives in the upper front part of your chest. We have two of them, one on the right, one on the left. And in the Sandy model, you can see that the clavicle comes across and meets the rest of your right shoulder. So it makes up part of your AC joint on the outside and sternoclavicular joint on the inside. So I'm just going to go ahead and snap this so you can start talking. Yeah, and, and that's part of why it, why it breaks is that it's uh, common. You can see it. There's not a lot of soft tissue or yeah. muscle on top of it. You can definitely it, feel your own clavicle quite readily. And it takes a lot of force when people fall with outstretched arms, fall directly under their shoulder. The clavicle takes some of the force. Yeah, so what kind of activities do you see people, you hear people are doing when they break their clavicle? So often stuff where you're falling. So football, rugby, hockey, you yeah. know, that kind of stuff fall off a bike. Those yeah. are sort of classic how I broke my clavicle. How, yeah. Um, how does it present? So I think uh, l like with a lot of orthopedic injuries, the first thing you feel is a lot of pain. So you're falling off your bike or you got went into the boards in hockey and you have a lot of pain right over the area. Uh, and then because it's so superficial, uh, so close to the skin, you can see a deformity. Often you'll see a big bump there, a deformity. Uh, or if it's a very bad fracture and it breaks through the skin, then you'll actually see the end of the clavicle sticking out of the skin. That's you, very rare. You do not want to see the end of the clavicle. No, no. That makes it worse. Yeah, much. So you have, so you have pain, you have some deformity, you can't use your arm usually very well. So where do you go? Do you, do you walk it off? Shake that one off and get back on the ice and finish the game. Some people do try that and often doesn't work very well. No, no. so you, got, you have to seek medical help immediately. So walk-in clinic, emergency room, potentially family doctor, but usually something more acute. Yep. And then, uh, so the way that it's diagnosed is like most things. The, the doctor will ask you your history, they'll do a physical examination, then ultimately it's confirmed with an x-ray. Right. Uh, okay, so let's say I've gone to my doctor, uh, and he said, yeah, like you thought, you have a broken clavicle, broken collarbone. So when they're looking at the x-ray as an orthopedic surgeon or as a radiologist or a family doctor, uh, look for a bunch of different things. One, the number of fracture lines that there are, whether it's a simple fracture or a comminuted fracture, multiple pieces. Whether or not the pieces are displaced, so whether the bones are broken but still touching or whether they're displaced. Is it, is it fractured or is it broken or is it cracked? Sometimes it could be all three because all of those words mean the same thing. Right. But that's a common question that I get from patients all the time. So all those things mean the same thing. And then probably the other thing that's really important as far as treatment planning is whether or not it's short. So if it's broken and then the bones because of the muscles that are attached have been pulled in a way that the, the bone is actually now shorter than it's supposed to be. That's a big determining factor of potential treatment options. Right. Shortening and uh, displacement. Or if shortening is a type of displacement, it can be where they were lined up like Dr. Weening was saying and now they're not lined up. I had a... Uh, yeah, a young fellow broke his clavicle, and I said, oh, look, you, you broke your collarbone. And he looked at me and said, forever? So hopefully not. That's our job is to make sure that things aren't broken forever. Yes. So uh, treatment options, what do we do? All right. Uh, so there's two main treatment options, uh, operative versus non-operative. Um, I would safely say that the vast majority of clavicle fractures are treated non-operatively. I would agree with that. As time has passed, though, that seems to be becoming slightly more con controversial for specific types of fractures. Right. Here's the controversy. Some fractures, you will see some orthopedic surgeons treat them non-operatively, and some fractures, you'll see them treat operatively. So we, when, we, when we think of an operation for a procedure, we say, well, what are the indications for that procedure? So what are the indications to treat a fractured clavicle operatively? So one is when you can see it. Yeah. When it is through the skin, that is that requires surgery. Why is and that such a bad thing for bone to poke through the skin? So when you talk about an open fracture or a compound fracture, once that bone's through the skin, there's a higher chance that you get an infection because 
even though it may look like it's clean, it's not clean. Bacteria lives on our skin all throughout, right. regardless of how many times you have a shower, and that bacteria then can go inside the skin and cause an infection of not only the skin, but also the bone and cause other problems. So that has to, needs to be dealt with relatively acutely. So open fracture, you're looking at surgery right away. For sure. What are the other reasons that you might get an operation? Other um, in the absolute indications where you actually you likely need surgery is uh, if you have a high energy type uh, injury where you've got a fractured clavicle and a fractured humerus and we say your shoulder is now floating uh, and it's very unstable so that would be an absolute indication for surgery. Um, if it's not quite open and the skin is really being tented so the bone is looks like it's trying to get out trying to poke through the skin eventually that little bit of skin over the tip may die so that's another indication to try and relieve the pressure off the skin with uh, surgery. Um, and then there are some criteria that your orthopedic surgeon will look at in terms of the degree of shortening. One of the magic numbers is about two centimeters. If we say we see more than two centimeters of shortening that we can't correct with a brace or a sling uh, is an indication for surgery or uh, the location of the fracture. Sometimes if the fracture is very lateral or very outside um, and there's a lot of displacement, those tend to uh, have a higher chance of not healing if you try and treat them non if you try and treat them non-operatively. And the way that you determine how much is short is with an x-ray often showing both clavicles and you have to be careful because if you have a fracture line that's oblique it could actually look like it's short mm -hmm. but it's actually not short so they can measure that and potentially even get a CT scan to determine how, how short it is and the number that seems to be uh, the biggest guideline is approximately two centimeters so if the fracture is more than two centimeters short that's going to lean someone more towards potential surgery options. Right. Um, and, you know, it is controversial, operative versus non-operative, but the good news is there's a lot of research going on right now where people are studying the outcomes and saying, well, hey, do people do better if we operate on them? Do people do better if we don't? And which types do we need to operate on more and more? So I think it's still an evolving topic, and I think the way we treat things now may be different than the way we treat them five or ten years from now. And definitely when you say doing better, what we mean, like, well, how could surgery make it better is that it could either increases the chances that it does heal, mm -hmm. increase the chances that it heals in a proper position, as well as increase the function of the shoulder after the fracture has healed. So those are all potential reasons why some people say, hey, we should consider surgery for this type of fracture. Okay, so let's talk quickly. What is the surgery for this? What is, what is a surgical treatment of a clavicle fracture? So it typically would be uh, with a metal plate and screws to reduce the, or take the position of the broken bones closer to where they were anatomically were designed and hold them together with screws until they've healed. Right. And um, what are some of the risks or complications associated with that? So there's general risks of surgery, obviously, and then locally, risk to the skin, so risk of infection, risk of damage to some important uh, nerves that are there, as well as blood vessels that are there, as well as the risk that you have an operation and you put a metal plate and screws in there, and then it still doesn't heal. It does not guarantee you a successful uh, union of the fracture. Right. And then your lung is pretty close to there, so you could get a pneumothorax. So I generally say things with surgery, heart attack, stroke, death, blood clot, infection, pneumonia, bad things can happen, but we take precautions to minimize the chance of something bad happening. And like Dr. Weening said, you can get an infection because this is so superficial. The hardware could be irritating you. Symptomatic hardware, that took the words right out of my mouth there. You might need to have the hardware taken out later. Yes. Um, okay, so what about non-operative? How do we treat these non-operatively? So uh, usually in my clinic, I uh, would have them in a sling. And then I also would talk about something called a figure of eight, which is a special brace that it's almost like a almost like a bra kind of thing where yeah. you, you hold your shoulders back, encouraging good posture. And the thought is that can help maybe restore a more normal length and posture to the bone. Sure, figure of eight uh, sling as well. I use those uh, often as well. And uh, some of the risks of non-operative treatment. So some of them are the same as operative is that you potentially could have a, what's called a delayed union, so it could take longer than normal for that fracture to heal. You could have a malunion where the fracture heals in an odd position. Typically that does not have a lot of uh, a dysfunction associated, potentially a cosmetic deformity where you have a bump, or if it was really short, that potentially could alter the function of your shoulder. Um, yeah. And then a non-union, so delayed, union, malunion, and then potentially non-union. By not operating, the fracture might not heal, and that would require surgery if it was symptomatic. Yeah, and like Brad said, you will have a bump there, and that's probably going to last forever. Um, so when you're thinking about operating versus non-operative, often we say, well, you're going to trade the bump in for a scar, because if you have oper operative treatment, you're going to have a big scar across there. So uh, either way, there's going to be probably some change in the way your clavicle looks. Um, 
And then you talked about the uh, healing in an uh, awkward position or not healing at all. And anything you can do to help, help the fracture heal if you're going with a non-operative treatment. So I'd say there's a couple things that I tell people. One thing is things that you shouldn't do and that's smoke. Um, smoking increases your risk of bones not uniting properly, they're not healing properly, so I encourage people to stop smoking. Um, another thing is there's some growing evidence that use of a bone stimulator, an ultrasound bone stimulator could potentially allow the bone to heal faster. Right, and um, vitamin D, one of my colleagues uh, is a big advocate of uh, taking oral vitamin D supplements when you have a broken bone. To, uh, and there is some evidence that is suggesting, yeah, maybe vitamin D might help uh, fractures heal. And obviously discuss that with your physician depending on your other medical conditions and osteoporosis and things like that. So that's clavicle fracture, very common, mostly treated non-operatively. More and more evidence that we're seeing where perhaps operative intervention for certain types of fractures might be beneficial. Um, How long does it take to heal, Paul? Well, we have our magic number of six weeks. I usually tell people six weeks, uh, you know, for things to heal. Clavicle seems to take sometimes a little bit longer, maybe up to 12 weeks. Um, in kids, uh, so if your growth plates are still open, those heal very fast. Uh, uh, very, very rare to require any surgical intervention for a pediatric clavicle fracture. They seem to heal fast. Uh, you know, four weeks. With kids, I have a lot of parents look at me funny when the x-ray has a clavicle that looks like this. Yeah. They're like, is that okay that my kid's clavicle has a really weird point to it? Yeah. What well, do you tell them? I say, yeah, it is weird. <laughs> no, I say, um, yeah, that's going to straighten out. Uh, kids' bones uh, are growing, uh, so as they grow, they straighten out. So a pediatric clavicle fracture may not end up with a bump there all the time. It'll probably remodel over time. And, fun fact, do you know what the last bone to stop growing is your clavicle. So your clavicle growth plates stay open into your 20s actually. Yes. So the clavicle is one of your last bones uh, of your body to stop growing. So it does have, in younger people, the potential to uh, realign itself. So you're being seen in the clinic every now and then and then you get x-rays to confirm that it's united. My kid has got a rep hockey tournament this weekend. He's on the all-star team. They're in the finals. He broke his clavicle and it's been four and a half weeks now and the x-ray looks like it's healed. He doesn't have any pain, Doc. Can he go play? Yeah, that's, that we, that's a very common scenario where uh, we've got to get the kids back to their competitive sport and you don't want to get them back too soon because they could re-rupture. So generally, if you can take three months off from your sport, that would be uh, ideal. Um, and then, especially if it's a contact sport, for some of the non-contact sport, sporting activities, I'll let them get back a little bit sooner, or, you know, somewhere after six weeks, yep. depending on what the sport is. But contact sports, probably three months. What do you say? Uh, yeah, usually for the younger kids, the parents push me hard. And I say, definitely there is a risk. I mean, your kid could go out six months from now and still break their clavicle. So, yeah, I want people to be able to do a push-up. That's one mm -hmm. thing that I ask them to do. I want them to have no tenderness, near full range of motion, and, near, and nearly full strength. So, yeah, often it is close to three months, though. All right. Um, anything else about clavicle fractures? No, I don't think so. That's it. I think that's pretty much it. Well, thanks for joining us uh, with, at Talking With Docs. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at talkingwithdocs at gmail.com. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. See you next time.